I'm John Slau. I'm a research professor at the University of Washington. I also own a small business, and uh, that's where we're at now, in the laboratories there. We've been working in the area of both propulsion and fusion, so this is the first time that we've combined the two together, and the reason for that is that we came up with kind of, we thought, a clever idea of how you might be able to use fusion to do manned space travel at high speed. A realistic trip to Mars that NASA has studied extensively required 1,680 days for the entire trip. And it required 11 launches from the most powerful rockets that we have. So those two things would probably eliminate it, something like $20 billion just to put the stuff in space. We thought, well, if you could actually exhaust the propellant at a speed that's comparable to the speed you want to go, which you can do using a different energy source, in this case, nuclear energy, you could reduce that trip time to as short as 30 days. The difference between having a, a motor generator and a rocket, they're not the same, but we can use the same elements to start up the rocket. This one kind of designed for doing energy production on Earth, and it actually kind of acts like a diesel engine, but it doesn't look like a diesel engine, in that we create fuel on either end, what you might call the fuel injector. We make these ionized gases in these two regions here, and then instead of using a piston like you would in a car or in a diesel engine, we use a magnetic field, and the magnetic field pushes these, we activate different strips of magnet in time and push the plasmas together like you would a comp the compression part of a cylinder in a car. The amount of plasma we use for both the rocket and this is tiny. It's like the weight of an ash. And then with that compression, we get an ignition of plasma that produces a fusion energy that produces a heat pulse that travels back and is absorbed into the system just like your cars. But instead of driving you down the road, it creates electricity. So we separate kind of the propellant from the fuel, whereas in a chemical rocket, the fuel is the propellant. For us, the fuel is a fusion plasma, and the plasma is just an ionized gas. But we have a very special one we make here in this laboratory that kind of creates its own magnetic field that confines it into a little blob we call a plasmoid. So that's perfect as sort of the, the seed for the fusion reaction that we want to do to produce the energy for the rocket. Obviously the bomb people, when they were developing the hydrogen bomb and doing that, they, they weren't interested in increasing the scale, not de decreasing it. So it's a different direction entirely. But it makes use of the same sort of physical principles that were involved in, in that, in that you create a very, momentarily, a very hot gas that can yield tremendous amounts of energy. So we needed a way to compress this down so the temperature of the plasma would be in the 100 million degree range. <laughs> so pretty hot. And the way we do that is using a magnetic impulse that we apply to a thin shell of metal. The metal comes implodes in around the plasmoid, heats it to fusion temperature, then all the energy that's released in that fusion mini explosion gets absorbed by that shell and the shell now becomes the propellant. So what we propel out the back is hot, but it's not fusion hot. It's just hot enough. It's sort of the Goldilocks version. It's just right. So the way the spacecraft works, and also the way we call this the fusion engine, how it would produce energy, is you do many little pulses that all add up to a stream of, of uh, propulsive thrust and power that moves you through space. So that scheme is being tested in our lab. So we know how to make the plasmoids. We know how to shoot them <laughs> over the distances we need. We built a device, a large coil magnet, that could implode the metal shell. And we've tested that, and we can implode metal shells. It does sufficient energy and speed. So now we want to combine the two as a final demonstration of the whole process. And we hope to do that later this summer.